Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can you all hear me? Cool. Thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. I'm Sanjay Jogia. I'm from London. And uh, thanks to Gervir for buffering me and Lindsay from earlier on. Um, we're going to be speaking about lighting and inspiring lighting, creating that kind of drama at an event on location, that sort of thing. So before I begin, I'm going to show you a little intro video just to uh, give you a feel for um, what I do and, and how I do it. If this is going to behave, let's just see. I've always had three great passions in my life. Photography, cars and architecture. I've chosen to pursue photography. I'm Sanjay Jogian and this is what I do. Okay, so that gives you a little flavor of what I do and how I do it, some BTS there. There's gonna be a lot of BTS stuff today. I'm gonna to be talking about some lighting setups and how you can leverage that to get multiple shots. And for me, my lighting style is part of, my lighting is part of my style, okay? And this is kind of how I break it down, that it's a consistent way of seeing things. So I see lighting in a very consistent way kind of every single time. And the variables come from the people, the couple, the situation, just what's inspiring me, kind of what I'm feeling, that sort of thing. So light is our paint and the equipment we use is, is our brush basically. So we've got to use the equipment in a way that we know. You've got to get to know your equipment well. So a little behind the scenes video. This is something we did in Rome. It was an abandoned uh, museum. Um, if you know uh, Spectre, the James Bond movie, this, is, this was filmed in, in this colonnade over here. It's just, it's completely derelict, this place, but the light coming in was absolutely amazing. This was in Rome. So you may not be able to hear the sound, but it gives you an idea of how I'm setting these things up. So I've got to compete with that. <clears throat> Could you turn me up a little bit? Um, so basically, we had this really intense sun coming into this very bright colonnade, and I had to place the bride in the shadows. Can you guys hear me? I had to place the bride in the shadow just because it was so hot and so bright. I didn't want it to melt and she was wearing this outfit that was crazy hot. So that's what happens when you, the flash doesn't fire. And it's good, I always keep those shots just to show the brides and grooms that this is why we take the effort to set the shots up the way we do. And in the end, this is what we get. This is not retouch, so this is out of camera, maybe just a little bit of processing, okay? but you can see the difference that light makes. So light shaping is a huge part of it. And then we can repeat that and do the same thing with the groom. So I'm always shaping light. I'm always using modifiers. I'm always using grids, zoom reflectors, beauty dishes, umbrellas, all that sort of stuff. Snoots, I love using snoots. Um, and uh, clearly love it lying down on the job as well. So this is the same place. And um, I just wanted to use the drama of that colonnade and that ceiling. And at this point, you can see the sun coming lower. Just, this is beautiful, warm light there. So I've placed her in the sun, but the stonework is still brighter. And I'm using this pro photo flash here. The stonework's still brighter, so her skin's always gonna be darker. You know, the people will always look darker than the environment. So you have to give it a little ping of light just to lift it. And I had my assistant there trying to create some smoke, a bit of drama. It was just getting blown away, but um, we, you know, it, it did a little something. A little something. You can see just the environment that we're in. So at first it looks really beautiful and dramatic and 
uh, tropical and then whatever, you know. Uh, but it's it's just a derelict building. So you, we, can, we can do these things anywhere. And at the end, I'm going to show you a location which is possibly one of the worst locations I've ever worked in. And I'll show you the image I've got from that. I, I love to show the couples the images on the back of the camera. Oh my flesh, God, no wow. flesh, flesh, no flesh. Because the thing is, it really, it really lifts their confidence when they can see what's happening and how good they look. And what it means is when you can show them on the back of the camera, they're putty in your hands. They'll just do whatever you want. They, they now fully trust you. But they have that boost in themselves that they can do this. So same couple, this is at night in Rome. I love night photography. Um, at this stage, the, the, the continuous lights come out. Any of you guys been to Rome? Yeah? When you go to the Spanish steps, yeah. It's, like, it's never this empty. We had to do this at 3 in the morning. So I'm using continuous light, just a little fill on them, just to lift some shadows. And a, and a key light just from this side. There's actually another what, third light off camera there, just to create a little bit of separation in the shadows. Color management is so important, always create profiles for the camera, get a white balance shot too. Especially when you have lighting like this, which gives off a green hue, you need to be able to control that in post afterwards. So you want the base shot to be as accurate color wise as possible. Okay, so this is what we get. Uh, another example, so just using available light, you know, so sometimes I just feel a bit lazy, you know, there's some nice light coming through the window, we'll just use that. It's a lovely soft light, this reflection here. Pose the couple, work with the reflections. A few different variations on the poses. And then show them the results. And this is what we end with. So this, there's no additional lighting here. It's just the window light. But then take a different perspective. So the couple are in the same place. I've just come round the other way, 90 degrees. I'm shooting onto them. And you get a beautiful silhouette. Why wouldn't you? OK, so we've got to pose them just right to actually accentuate that silhouette. And uh, that reflection just adds the extra drama, right? Same bride, different part of the building. They had this wine rack. Uh, in the entrance of a bar in the, in the hotel where we were at. And um, I just wanted to, use, I wanted to use a reflection there. So I'm just using one continuous uh, light. It's the Stella Pro lights. I don't know if you guys have seen them. They're at booth 14 something just down there. Uh, I'm using the CLX-10. And um, you know, you gotta have a bit of fun with that reflection. And you can see on the back of the camera what we get there. Well done, guys. You know, and when you ask the couple to do something like this, you have, to, you have to let them know it was worth it. You have to give them the reward, the satisfaction of seeing the shot, right? So as much as you can, use that. Don't just hide your camera and say, I'll show you once I've worked it. Use it to fuel them on the shoot, because otherwise your shoot will go downhill. If you can actually amp them up by showing what's happening, the shoot just gets better and better and better. Make sense? Um, this is Dubai, uh, clearly in the desert, and it was, it was an interesting day. It, clearly it was very hot, there's sand everywhere. Um, you gotta worry about the sand getting into your equipment and that sort of thing. So you gotta be brave when you decide to do something like this, for sure. And actually, you don't normally get cloudy days in Dubai, but we just happened to pick the cloudy day, typical. But, um, the sun was behind the, behind the couple, behind the clouds there. So we had a very flat sky. It was very gray, didn't have much texture. So using um, graduated filters on the lens just to bring the sky down so we can extract the detail in post afterwards. And then just one bare bulb pro photo off camera here. And I'm scrambling up this dune, sliding down again, trying to get the right angle because this camel's coming at me fast. Camels move fast, by the way, guys. Um, so this is, this is what it looks like. So just my assistant holding up a, a bare B1, uh, profile to B1, just um, off, off to camera left. And that's giving that detail in the sand there. And just that separation on the other side of the dune. Makes sense? And you can just see I've got this matte box on the front of my lens. Just You won't be able to see it, but the matte box in front of the lens there. That's holding the, the graduated filter. 
So if you're not using filters, use it, guys. Uh, it really makes your life easy because what it does, it takes the strain away from your lighting, from your flash having to recycle. It also means you can use slightly less aggressive settings in having to stop down the image because you're not fighting with the light in the sky, you're bringing it down in camera. So you don't need so much flash power. Is that cool? So end of the wedding day, doing portraits with a couple, beautiful location. And I've set this shot up, it's using a 7200. I don't often set my camera up on a tripod, but I had another idea for a shot from the same location with the same pose. So you can really leverage your shots. I've set this up as a tight shot just to, for that tension, that drama between the couple. And we're actually very far apart. So I tell you where, they were basically where that bookcase is. And I was where that, a little further on from where that WPPI sign is, okay? So I'm shooting across this big space. Just two lights. Uh, a snooted pro photo coming across this way and a gridded pro photo behind just to create that separation. And just by switching the lens without changing the settings, I get this. Okay, so that's just still using the same two lights. I haven't changed my camera settings. I haven't changed the light settings. I've just changed my lens. And because the camera's on a tripod, it doesn't disturb the composition. Make sense? Pose is damn near the same. Okay, so once you have a setup, and you've done the pose and you've done the lighting. Yeah, you can tweak the pose, but you can also change your lens, different focal length, and get a whole different shot. Like this. So basically, the question is, where was the light source there? I'm shooting in this gallery, in this beautiful building just outside London where I live. And I've got a, a snooted pro photo all the way across here. And it's on a really tall man photo stand. It's nearly touching the ceiling and it's just firing this light across the room. And then behind them is just another gridded light. Um, and that was, that was actually in the room that was behind them, just to create separation. So I, I switched off the lights in that room so that they had a backdrop, yeah? <clears throat> I'm actually powering through this. I thought I was gonna run out of time. So we have time for questions after this as well. We, um, this is a wedding that we did uh, just last summer. And it was, it was a Sikh wedding, and in the, the Sikh temple, the Gurdwara, was basically just a converted office in an industrial area. So when the, when the wedding cars, Bentleys and Rolls Royces were coming in, they were greeted by storage containers, and just, it was a dump, it was terrible. And when you go into the actual room where the wedding happens, again, it was just a converted office, you know, tiled ceilings, horrible carpet, um, vertical blinds on the windows. It's almost like they'd cleared up the desk the night before and they turned it into a temple. And so I was really fighting to um, find nice clean angles, inspire myself to think of what I was going to do with their portraits afterwards. And if you, I don't know if any of you guys have ever witnessed a Sikh wedding or shot a Sikh wedding, but the couple, they, they sit on the floor. There are passages from the, the, the Sikh holy book being read out and they have to bow down, get up, walk around the book four times after each, after each hymn. And then they come back round, they pray and they bow down again and they sit down and they wait for the next one. So I just happened to be side onto the bride at this point. And the, the groom, he was, he was like, you know, he was like a giant, this guy. And the bride was very dainty, very elegant, very slim. She almost fit within his profile when they were standing side, side by side. So, I saw the shot and I thought, okay, that's, you know, that's, that's cool. You've got to get the shot because I can crop out all the other distractions. But in my mind, I'm thinking, she's going to be pr protected for the rest of her life. You know, she's al he's always going to be in her shadow. You could see the power and strength in him. And then at that point, I'm just thinking, hold on, that's my shot. So after the wedding, when we had a chance, I just took them into a room and I'll show you the room. I'll show you the room. All I needed was just a plain... White, it wasn't even a white wall, just a plain wall to create this. And this is basically out of camera. This is just out of camera using the camera profile. There's not even retouched, there's just stuff all over the walls and marks like that. So just to show you, this is the room I was doing this in. Oh, hold on, let, let me replay that. I don't know what happened there. There you go. So the room's nothing to look at. It's just two continuous lights. One pointed at him, way off camera, and he's, he's out of the scene completely. 
just to cast a shadow on the wall. I place him in the shadow, place the bride in the shadow, and then light her from the front just with a octobox, and that's it. That's it. So you can create dramatic shots wherever you are. Um, you know, the, 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 the mindset is that you have to just clear your mind. You know, prime example on this day, I was struggling. It's probably the deepest I'd had to dig just because we had nothing pretty around us. But it's not about the location. It's always about the light. Okay, light first, then location. If you don't have good light, make it. So you can create the dramatic lighting and all you need is a wall. You don't need exotic locations to make dramatic images. Is that cool? Let's skip that. Any questions, guys? No, very shy bunch. Okay, so I think that we're good. So um, I'm on Instagram there. It's at uh, iJogio on Facebook and Twitter as well. So uh, thanks for coming, guys. Thank you.